When I was in school, I never liked drawing diagrams in biology, even though it was my favorite subject. I used to bug my mom and asked her to draw the diagrams for me. But now that I'm making these videos, I realized I can't do that anymore. I have to somehow draw these diagrams. So when I was looking at the diagrams for anatomy of stem, both dicots and monocots, I was wondering how can I make drawing this a bit more easy and a bit more interesting. That's when I came up with the idea to use a mnemonic device. So what is a mnemonic device? It is a sentence or a phrase in which the first letter of each word is used to remember something. In this case, we're going to use the mnemonic device to remember the different parts of dicot stem. So when we're talking about anatomy of plants, we have to remember that our diagram should include all three types of tissues found in plants, which are epidermis, ground tissue and vascular tissue. Epidermis is the outermost layer, vascular tissue is the xylem and phloem and all other tissue in between the epidermis and the vascular tissue constitute the ground tissue. So the anatomy of a stem should include all these three tissues. To take a look at the internal structure of the stem, we need its transverse section. And what is a transverse section? Suppose you have a stem and then you are cutting it horizontally like this and getting a thin slice out of it. And the thin slice looks something like this. So this is a transverse section. You are cutting it horizontally to get a transverse section. But if we want to look at all the cells that make up this transverse section from the end of this to the inside of this, we need a smaller slice and for that we can take a pie shaped slice like this. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to use a mnemonic device to remember how to draw this pie shaped image of a dicot stem. So let's begin. So this is the transverse section of a dicot stem. So we know that the epidermis is the first layer or the outermost layer of the stem. In dicots, the epidermis has epidermal hair which is also called trichome. So we're going to use the letter E to remember this epidermis for our mnemonic. Following the epidermis is a layer called hypodermis and hypodermis in dicots is made up of colenchyma. So this hypodermis is actually a part of the cortex which is split into three layers. First is the hypodermis, next is the middle layer of cortex which is made up of parenchymatous cells and the innermost layer of the cortex which is called the endodermis. So the cortex is split into hypodermis, middle parenchymatous layers and the innermost endodermis. Now these parenchymatous cells are arranged in such a way that they have a lot of intercellular space and the cells are irregular in shape. So we are going to have to remember that when drawing the parenchymatous layer. The cells of the endodermis are barrel shaped and are arranged with no intercellular space. Now within the endodermis is the cells of the pericycle. So what do the cells of the pericycle do? The cells of the pericycle are involved in the lateral growth of the stem which is the increase in the width of the stem. Now from here the ground tissue is over and then the vascular tissue begins. So first we have phloem. Below the phloem in dicots is a layer of cambium. So this cambium is involved in the formation of secondary xylem and phloem. Because of that, it is located in between phloem and xylem. So here in cambium, the cells look rectangular in shape when seen under the microscope. Now when it comes to xylem, the metaxylem is closer to the cambium and it is wider in shape. And the protoxylem is far away from the cambium and is narrower compared to metaxylem. And the last bit of tissue that is found in dicot stem is the pith. Now the pith also has irregularly shaped cells with a lot of intercellular space. So there you have it. This is a rough diagram of how to draw a transverse section of a dicot stem. Now let's come to our mnemonic. This is something that I have come up with you can come up with your own mnemonic to remember the parts of a dicot stem. And this mnemonic is not just restricted to dicot stems. You can use it to remember anything anywhere. So E is for every, C is for child, can, P is for paint, E is for elephants. Bye.
perfecting p e for perfecting p for patterns so this sentence says every child can paint elephants by perfecting patterns they can create c for create m for masterpieces and win prizes for p r proudly for p so the sentence goes every child can paint elephants by perfecting patterns they can create masterpieces and win prizes proudly this is a mnemonic that i've come up with to remember the different parts of a dicot stem now you can come up with your own mnemonic with your own words and remember the different parts of the dicot stem so this is a very rough image of a dicot stem how does a neat image actually look like a neater image of a dicot stem looks something like this now this is the pie shaped cross section what about the horizontal thin slice the transverse cross section that we cut initially how does that look like for die cuts it looks something like this now one way you can remember how to draw this is to remember watermelons so this is the uh, outer layer of the watermelon with some funny projections for the epidermal hair and then this is the inside part of the watermelon that is cut like this and these are the watermelon seeds so this cross section actually tells us a lot about the dicot stem so see how the vascular bundles are arranged in a ring shaped structure so this is important because dicot stems undergo secondary growth so as an adaptation for secondary growth the xylem and phloem bundles are arranged in a ring shaped structure and you can see the presence of medullary rays in between the vascular bundles so the medullary rays are involved in conducting water and nutrients in the dicot stem so you can use the same mnemonic to remember the different parts here it's just the structure looks a bit different because we are viewing it from a different angle so in the case of dicot stems the vascular bundles like i said are separated by a layer of cambium phloem and xylem are separated by a layer of cambium This type of vascular bundles in dicot stem is known as conjoint open. Now that we have studied the dicot stem, let's move on to a monocot stem. It's not exactly pie shaped here, it's sort of rectangular in shape. That's because monocot stems are much simpler than dicot stems. The main reason is the cortex is not actually divided into hypodermis, middle cortex layer and the endodermis. you have the epidermis which forms the outermost layer and notice the lack of epidermal hair here that's because the trichomes are absent in monocot stem below the epidermis is a layer of hypodermis but in monocot stems the hypodermis is made up of sclerenchymatous cells and not collenchymatous cells beyond this this whole thing is just ground tissue unlike in dicots the ground tissue is not split into parenchyma and endodermis which are the other two layers so you're just going to have to draw irregularly shaped parenchyma test cells fully that make up the ground tissue and unlike in dicots where the vascular bundles are arranged in a ring shape in monocots they are just scattered within the ground tissue so the xylem and phloem that make up the vascular bundles are scattered within the ground tissue it to me this looks like a creepy fish the face of a creepy fish that lives deep under water so monocot stem is much simpler compared to dicot stem so another view of the transverse section of a monocot stem looks like this in the dicot stem this view gave us the fact that the vascular bundles were arranged in a ring shape but in the case of monocots the vascular bundles are scattered here and there to me this looks like a pizza this is the crust of the pizza this is the base and these are the toppings that's how i thought to remember the transverse section of a monocots now in the case of monocots the phloem and xylem are not separated by a layer of cambium this is because there's no secondary growth there's no formation of secondary xylem or secondary phloem because of this the vascular bundles in monocot stems are known as conjoint closed so using mnemonic devices was really helpful for me in this case i didn't have to call my mom and ask her to draw images for me